So thank you very much. So we're now coming to the closing session. And it's a, it's a real pleasure for me to introduce two speakers for this closing session. The first one will be Karina Angeliva, and she's the head of the sector education and research of the permanent representation of Bulgaria to the EU. And as you might know, the Bulgaria will be the chair of the EU for the first semester in 2018. So very welcome and I give the word to you. Thank you and uh, very good evening. Uh, it's already a bit late and I understood that you had uh, fantastic discussions today, which will be very interested uh, later to receive on. And uh, I believe that you are very tired, so I'll try to be concise and to inspire even more, but <laughs> uh, not to go into uh, deep details. But um, indeed, what I heard now from the uh, your closing session, I must say that uh, we very much subscribe to some of uh, the words that I heard now because uh, our main priority for the first semester of 2018 is uh, uh, to, to commit to uh, have a strong and uh, uh, debate on the future of the framework program, nine framework program for research and innovation. Uh, what does it mean? We want to, um, of course, to bring the attention of the ministers of research and education on the importance of the investments in uh, the framework program, but also in the next Erasmus Plus program. Uh, also uh, to discuss uh, the importance of the investments in those both sectors. That's why we will have interlinks with the ministers of finance. And uh, last but not least, we very much see the synergies uh, between the framework pro program, Erasmus Plus, and uh, also with the structural funds. Uh, of course, these debates for the new framework program are also uh, currently on the agenda of the Council. We have a very thoughtful discussions because you are aware that uh, the Commission uh, published its staff working document on the interim evaluation of Horizon. So, of course, uh, uh, we look into many details and what can be ameliorated in the future. Uh, indeed, one of the points uh, that for a country like Bulgaria is very important is uh, the low participation in the framework program. And this low participation in, in fact means that uh, there are still many regions uh, uh, that are um, disconnected from the excellence research, they are disconnected from networks and in fact uh, this brings uh, less um, uh, learning and less uh, experience in those regions. That's why discussing the future of Europe, we want to discuss also a uh, more inclusive approach and uh, uh, more participation of newcomers, of um, new regions, uh, uh, so to speak, to put on the agenda learning by uh, doing, so to uh, open the framework program. Indeed, in health sector, this uh, the lowest participation from the new member states, uh, which led us to another interesting um, ideas uh, with um, uh, colleagues from all the member states and uh, also back home in Sofia. Um, and uh, the main uh, discussions in the Council will work uh, on one of uh, the very important elements from the uh, research and innovation agenda. It's exactly how to accelerate the knowledge transfer, how to, how to maximize the implementation of research results. Um, one of the speakers I don't remember talked exactly about this, uh, how to bring the solutions that are already there, the results that are already there, to implementation. So acceleration of knowledge transfer, but also um, better and open access to solutions, where we, of course, can uh, uh, brainstorm on different uh, options, but of course we want to bring awareness of the nation of funders organizations to use these research, uh, results, but also uh, to use better uh, the structural and investment funds for this uh, uh, strategy. So this is really top on our agenda. Uh, in this um, uh, context, uh, of course, the research infrastructures are very important because we believe that we have to uh, enlarge the ne networks that are into this excellence research and especially towards the young generation of researchers and innovators. That's why the a skills agenda for young researchers in, is on our agenda to, to 
to, to reach a common agreement with uh, the ministers that we have to also to invest in our high quality uh, researchers because um, uh, we are talking a lot nowadays for digital skills uh, to work in interdisciplinary research, to work in, uh, with big data. But this also means a lot of uh, investments from the side of universities and the research institutes, uh, while uh, this is really uh, more and more connected with intersectoral cooperation. We can't put all the stress to uh, those ones that are uh, training uh, our kids, so to speak. That's why we want to uh, bring the, the discussion for the commitment of the ministers to the um, new skills agenda for researchers. Uh, um, indeed, uh, we believe that next year will be very fruitful for political discussions uh, uh, towards the next uh, challenges of the framework program and the uh, uh, defining of the missions. Uh, so, um, in uh, back home in Bulgaria, but also here, we are supporting different uh, type of uh, events where our main concept is really uh, to provide a platform for different stakeholders and especially citizens, uh, non-government organizations. In June, uh, we are organizing um, an important event linked to food and nutrition. Also, someone thought about this how to live healthy, but uh, also, of course, uh, how to put uh, research and innovation uh, in the practice of uh, producers, of uh, farmers, uh, and of uh, companies, which is, uh, of course, uh, has a huge impact on the health of the people. And um, um, we have uh, different other events. Uh, um, I must say that uh, in education, uh, because uh, it's uh, one program for research and education, our presidency believes it's very important to build this bridge. So in education, uh, we are going to talk for uh, very importance of uh, uh, new skills that we should uh, uh, embed uh, already in the early school living, and we will stress uh, the importance of the uh, science uh, and mathematical uh, subjects. Um, if you have any questions, I'm ready to, to share with you something more. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That's very useful information, and we are quite sure that Bulgaria is preparing itself very well for this task in the coming half a year. And we hope that you will remember uh, some of the items that have been discussed today in, the, in your preparation. So thank you very much. So then I would like to give the word to somebody who is supporting the RMD community for a long time already. He is the co-chair of the Members of Parliament Interest Group for Rheumatic Diseases. And uh, he's coming from Cyprus. And many more people coming from Cyprus who are working in the field of rheumatology have made an impressive uh, contribution to it. But it's a real pleasure for me to give the floor to Takis Haji Giorgio, who will speak to us. Do you want to stand there? Or? Yeah. Good afternoon. Uh, having followed just the latest part of this uh, seminar, I know that uh, everything is being said. So I will try not to repeat anything, although I have a written uh, speech and some things uh, may be repeated. I want to welcome you to the Euler conference and to, the la to this last session of the day. As in the past years, it is my pleasure to participate in the Euler Conference and show my support, as well as that of my colleagues in the European Parliament, for the concerns of Euler and the RMD community. As a Vice Chair of the Interest Group on, RMD, on RMDs, it is my pleasure to share with you some thoughts on this year's topic, which is a Health Research and Innovation After Horizon 2020. As you know, research and innovation is a wide field that covers a number of areas, from space to agriculture and security. However, in my eyes, health research in the area that is closer to citizens' concerns than any other field. This becomes clear from the number of people affected by chronic diseases, such as RMDs. 
This alone affects around 120 million people across Europe, which is every fourth person. In my home country, in Cyprus, for instance, around 100,000 people are estimated to be affected by these diseases. It is clear, therefore, that these diseases have a substantial impact on citizens affected who are at times not able to fully participate in social and working life. For politicians, it should therefore be clear that research and innovation is decisive for the future of our economies, employment, and the well-being of our citizens. For me, as a member of the European Parliament, it shows the clear need for strong and sustained action. The European Parliament has shown over the years that it is willing to further increase Europe's investment into research and innovation. First of all, through the main financial instrument the EU has at its disposal, Horizon 2020. Unfortunately, each time budgets are under discussion, my colleagues and I in Parliament have to stand up against budget cuts proposed by the Member States in the Council. Let me emphasize that we remain strongly committed to supporting research and, he and health research in particular in upcoming rounds of negotiation. We will maintain this resolve in discussions on the EU's annual budgets until 2020 and on the multiannual financial framework for the period post-2020. In our view, EU investment in research and innovation should be further increased during the next financial planning period. It should be our aim to maintain and, where possible, increase funding for research and innovation in healthcare. From my discussions with organizations representing scientific societies, such, such as your organization, EULAR, I'm aware that where Horizon 2020 is often oversubscribed. In fact, many researchers are wondering whether submission of project proposals even makes sense. We need solutions for this, and I will call on the Commission to reconsider its approach to the formulation of topics for calls as they are presented in the work programs. In my view, at least a part, a part of the calls should contain a clear focus, avoiding the entire health research community competing for the same funding. Our brightest minds should be working on research, not writing proposals. I would also call on the Commission not to neglect, not to neglect basic research. I understand that in innovation that is close to the market is important. But we should not stop our researchers from carrying out blue sky research. Our universities and research, research institutions should be able to make new discoveries free from any market pressure. This is particularly relevant for diseases where a cure has not yet been found, such as many of the over 200 RMTs. As far as the area of health research is concerned, it is time for a shift in priorities. Much more investment should be made in fields with a particularly high impact on society. RMD is a, is a perfect example for that. Impact on society is much higher than the cost of medication or other cost in the healthcare system. It is a broad concept which takes into account factors such as the cost of disability, the cost of work abs absenteeism, and the loss of productivity linked to chronic conditions that affect our economies and societies. Last but not least, the quality of life of citizens is very often at stake. I therefore very much support the European Commission's efforts at widening the focus of Horizon 2020 that now often addresses health together with well-being. This positive development needs to be built upon and extended where possible. To conclude, in the conference title where we, asked, we were asked the following question, 
to we need a novel approach. While we do not need a revolution, maybe we need one, we do still have substantial challenges to tackle. EU citizens expect the EU and member states not to look towards decreasing funding for research and innovation in health, but act in their interest to ensure the best possible access to innovative treatments that are urgently required across the EU. The European Parliament will stand up for the interest of people with RMDs and other chronic diseases to maintain a strong role for the EU in research and innovation in health. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I well appreciated. So now we're coming to an end of this conference. First, I would like to thank you all for participating. I think there's no need to have a conference without people participating. And I see a lot of people engaged. I saw a lot of active people working in the workshops. So thank you very much for that. Of course, I would like to thank the speakers, and the people who came from outside Jula, who came from other areas to help us developing ideas, to help us um, thinking about what should be done in the future. I would like especially to thank the people who are coming from the DGs in, this, in Brussels, who are helping us to bring our ideas forward, but also giving feedback on what is relevant and what is not relevant. So that's very much appreciated. This meeting was not possible with a, without a good preparation. And Neil Betteridge, who is our public affairs relation, and the Brussels office of EULA did a fantastic job bringing us all together. And apart from that, the other people from the EULA house in Zurich helped us. And we had the Croatian uh, audiovisual team to help us. So I think uh, more than enough reasons to go outside, enjoy a drink, have some networking before you go home. And if you go home, have a safe travel and see you back again. Thank you very much.